May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. March is Women's History Month. It first began in 1978 as a week, and then in 1987 was expanded to a full month. It also includes International Women's Day and is recognized in other countries throughout the world. Stephen, our director of music and organist, has carefully selected music that has been composed or lyrics written by women for us to appreciate this month. Now, one interesting thing about the Bible for me and perhaps you as well is that from time to time, after having read a text, over and over and over again, suddenly something jumps out as if you've read it or heard it for the very first time. The Hebrew text appointed for today gave me that experience. And of course, we were familiar with the, the burning bush and take your shoes off and I am the name of God. But this time I noticed God's self-introduction to Moses. I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Followed by what Moses should say to the Israelites about who sent him. The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Tell them this God has sent you. This is my name forever. I am. This time I thought, wait, what about the women? Are there women who are part of this story? And we all know the Bible is steeped in patriarchy. It reflects the life of a people who were created at a time and a culture that cast women below men. It is a text written through a particular lens and experience that gives presence and voice and therefore life to one group of people over another. Now, some might argue, well, that's just the way God wrote it. That's what, the way God wanted it to be. My rebuttal is perhaps it was acceptable back then, but not today. Given that who God is is revealed through Jesus in the Gospels, the trajectory of sustained and male domination, the good old boys network and the suppression of women's voices, contributions and denial of access could not have been ordained by God. Not the God of love, not the God who has created us equally in God's own image. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Obviously meant for patriarchy. So it's important to know a little bit about Moses' story. He's killed an Egyptian, and then when we meet him today, he's a fugitive. His life has changed. He's met his wife, the father-in-law of Jethro, and there he is out there tending to sheep in the desert. But God decides to recruit this fugitive, this murderer, to be the conduit who will rescue the Israelites from enslavement. Now it's important to understand that before Moses was born, the Hebrew people began to multiply the population so that Pharaoh became frightened. And so he ordered the midwives to kill every male baby that was born. Now these midwives had a fear of God and they refused to do it. So Pharaoh had a second plan. He just said, well, from now on, 
these male babies born of the Hebrew women are to be thrown into the Nile River. Well, Moses' mother, Jehovah, she refused. She had a baby boy, and she made a basket for him to rest in, sealed it so no water would enter, and placed her baby boy in this basket in the river. Observing this and following the basket as the baby's sister named Miriam. She watches where it lands and who sees it? Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter opens the basket and she is enthralled by this baby boy and she recognizes that he is from the Hebrew people and she could care less about her father's edict to kill boys of Hebrew heritage. So what she decides to do is she asks Miriam, do you know someone who could take care, who could nurse this baby for me? And Miriam's like, well, yes, I know someone. <laughs> yeah, it's their mother. And so Pharaoh's daughter offers to pay for this care. So Moses ends up going back to his mother who nurses and cares for him until he reaches the point that he goes into the house of Pharaoh. And it is there that he grows up and things change and he comes to the place where we find him now. Moses meets the God of the midwives, the God of his father, Levi, and the God of his mother, Jehovah, who took a chance and put her baby in a basket on the water. This is the God of his sister, Miriam, who stood watch and was a broker. This is also the God of Sarah and Abraham, the God of Rebecca and Isaac, the God of Leah and Rachel and Jacob. This is the God that says, I am there for all people. Today, the pay gap between men and women in this country is real. During the pandemic, more women suffered by losing jobs and we're facing a child care crisis. Patriarchy is baked into our culture, so much so that some women internalize it and therefore help to perpetuate its existence. I think there's nothing worse than a female misogynist. Our liturgy is filled with masculine language that we try to abate. But in order to help dismantle it, that is, its existence in our culture, men need to take a stance for change, abandon roadblocks. One of the most powerful images I've recently seen came just a few weeks ago. It was the President of the United States flanked by the Vice President of the United States and the most recent nominee to fill the vacancy on the Supreme Court. The President was not wearing a mask. The two women were wearing a mask. And I saw this as a metaphorical image. As it took the President using his position of power and authority that will allow these two women to remove their masks and have a voice in the arena. This is not something anybody would have thought possible 25 years ago. Women's history is our history. Whenever we dismantle the walls of exclusion, we open the way for all of us to stand on holy ground 
to take our shoes off and become vulnerable to God's way, to understand God's way is not one of suppression and exclusion. God is a great I am from one generation to the next. I am created the rich diversity that we get to enjoy just a glimpse of when we look into the eyes of each other, when we break down the labels and barriers and walls that society has created, we can look across and see that's a little bit of what God is like. Isn't that a blessing? The mysterious God who appeared in the burning bush, the bush not consumed by fire. Too often the loss of power causes people to hold on to particular instances, places, positions. But the burning bush tells us that should not be a fear that anyone is holding on to. Because with God, there's plenty. There's more than enough for everybody. I am turns lemons into lemonade, sweetened by God's love. So in this Women's History Month, let us not take it for granted, just another Awareness Month, because there's so much work to do, so much ideology to be changed. But it can become easy if we accept God's call, God's way, God's message of equality and equity and inclusion. Amen.